Hello, hola. How many you? How many of you speak Spanish? Say, only one, two, three. Ah, oh, that's impressive. Well, hello everybody. Thank you for staying here. Talking after Moxie and Dan Kaminsky is a tough task, but someone has to do it. So <laughs> that's me. Well, first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, this is the fourth year that I'm talking here in, in DEF CON. I'm from Spain. So, uh, any of you have been one year before uh, in a, one of my talks? Any of you? Ah, perfect. Well, I'm from Spain. I'm sorry for my accent. I have a um, horrible accent. That's the problem with all the people from Spain. And I, in my case, it's special because I started to learn English when I was 33 years old. Right now I'm 25, but I started when I was uh, 33 year olds and I got a lot of problems with English, especially with the words that starts with S, like my country, Spain, Spanish. I used to say A, a Spain, like all the words, Spain, a station, and so on, and I got a lot of problems. And, and my personal teacher, my personal training was telling me not say A, say S Spain, Spain. And I tried to, to fix this problem uh, saying a very small S, and in the end, I used to say, I'm penis. And it sounds very bad also when, when you are in a party talking to a girl. So I'm sorry for my English. I'm from Spain. How many of you have been to Spain any time in your life? Huh? Hey, very well. Well, if not, you, you, you have to know some things about the Spaniards. First of all, we, we know how to do parties. This is one of the most famous parties in Spain. It's the San Fermín. It's a very impressive party. The only party very similar to this is the Mardi Gras in New Orleans. As you can see, there are a lot of people on the street, people from around the world. And it's a seven days party, 24 hours uh, every day, and every day we need to clean up the city, so we release uh, some bulls across the city, and you have to run to get uh, safe. <laughs> this is real, you have to run, and if not, you, you will end up with some friend doing special things. This is one of the parties, it's one of the most famous, but we got uh, parties around the country. This is another one, it's Tomatina, it's a battle of tomatoes. You can get into the whole city fighting with tomatoes, it's impressive, and it's very funny. In the end, everybody, it's like an orgy, but not an orgy. Well, sometimes it's, it is, <laughs> but it lasts like this. Well, another one party that you have to know from Spain is the Fallas. Uh, this party is in Valencia every, every year. And during the whole year, people are constructing this kind of sculptures, are very nice sculpture, as you can see, are 10 meters tall. And uh, at the end of the day, we need to burn them. To all of them, no one survive. This is a tradition, a Spanish tradition. <laughs> Because we need the fire to, to cook paella, which is one of the most tasty food in the world. <laughs> and of course, uh, in Sevilla, for religious people, this is the Holy Week in Sevilla. All, of, all, the, all the people from Andalusia, the south part of Spain, is carrying the, the images, re, uh, religious people. But it's not only for religious people, people, because one week after, there is the April Fair, which is a different party where you can drink, uh, sing, the dancing and so on, it's very famous. And of course, if you go to Spain, you have to visit my, my city, which is Madrid, a very nice city, a city that never sleeps, like New York, and it's quite nice. So don't forget to visit my country, okay? Understand? <laughs> well, this said, I'm going to talk about uh, other things. It was supposed that this talk was uh, where I, I talk about how to hack terminal services and Citrix environments, but we are going to, to deliver this talk this afternoon in, in track two. And this talk is uh, about a story on the internet from my point of view, from the point of view of uh, an Spaniard, a guy in a very small country that we, call, we, uh, we could call a small bill because it's like a, like a village. Well, once upon a time, we were very happy on the internet. Everything was was beautiful. We got a network in which uh, we, can do, we could do a lot of things. It was, everything was, was perfect, a fantasy, a fantasy world. Internet was a space of freedom, a space where all opinions were allowed, where uh, nobody controls the network. Uh, we use words like net neutrality or anonym, uh, anonymity, or a network with no rules, and everything was perfect. The only problem that we got at that, at that time 
is that, that it was created in the age of Aquarius. And everybody thought that the rest of the people will be, will be happy with this kind of network. The only problem that we got was the trolls, you know, that kind of people who, who has nothing to do with that comment in your blog, I don't like this, you are wrong, I don't like this, you are wrong, you know that kind of people? Yeah. Well, even this problem we solve is with, uh, with, uh, with some special uh, um, netiquette. We use uh, rules, but it wasn't imposed, it's just a recommendation. If someone tried to, to become a troll, you send a file with netiquette rules explaining, uh, explaining how to behave on the internet. It was all the problem. But someday, Wikileaks appeared. With Wikileaks, we realized that the internet wasn't that way. I'm not going to talk about the Wikileaks project itself. I'm not going to talk about if what they are doing is a crime or not. I'm going to talk about the censorship that they uh, suffered and what happened after Wikileaks released the cables from Bradley Manning. The idea is that at that point, we realized that internet wasn't that peaceful place. There was a lot of, uh, a lot of problems with internet and we discovered all together in only one week. We leave the matrix and watch and see the reality of the internet. First of all, we discovered that some governments could use uh, hacking techniques to shut down computers, to shut down servers. Like with, uh, the first thing that they suffered was a distributed uh, denial of service. It was supposed to be done by a powerful country. It's supposed to be Spain. And it was the first step in this, in this story. After that, the second story was that they were kicked out from Amazon in one day. In one day. It's incredible. If you try to get uh, an order from a, uh, from a judge in Spain, you need more than three months. But one, with one, only one day, they were able to, uh, to kick out uh, for, uh, Wikileaks from Amazon. Then the next problem with the internet domain. And that's, uh, that's very important for us. From our point of view, from an Spanish point, um, Spanish point of view, that's a big problem because uh, most of the companies in Spain are .com. Even my company is a .com company. And even we got .org companies. And in this case, in only one day, this is the 3rd of December, they uh, lost the domain. Of course, after that, the money with PayPal, MasterCap, and so on. <clears throat> and the most impressive thing is that time after, the anonymous group get into the scene and they tried to do something against the people who were fighting to, to Wikileaks. One of the uh, most important things that they do was the H.B. Gary Federal Ownage. It was very funny, the story, with the SQL injection, extracting the emails, and so on. But after analyzing the email addresses, we discovered that there was crappy services that the, the governments, not only the U.S. government, the governments from around the world were, were uh, using. Uh, uh, for instance, Tax B or 12 Monkeys project that were project to control machines in, of the citizen or computers from, I don't know, companies. Also, the, fake, uh, the Facebook profiles. No? The idea is that there was a, a board of psychologists managing profiles like playing sims and trying to, to push ideas on the internet, on the social network. And the last one with the viral propaganda, using images like, like the one on the right side to, to throw ideas across the social network. After that, we realized that internet has a lot of problems also in the infrastructure. One of them is uh, publicly known is the Great Wall uh, firewall in China. I don't know if you were in China, but it's true, it's impossible to, to watch porn. The BGP attack in Egypt, the idea of this, of this attack is when the revolution starts in, in Egypt, uh, the government cut off all the uh, network publication in the BGP servers, so the network of Egypt was take, uh, was take it out from the internet. It was a radical decision, but it works. It worked for, 
for the moment. Of course, the law. Every country has uh, a special law on the internet, and all the countries are trying to get a, a bigger piece on the a, a bigger piece on the internet. Uh, there, it's supposed to be international laws, and of course, American laws. That for us, for Spanish people, is very important, more important than our own law in on the internet. Also, problems with the DNS, with WikiLeaks. It was very, very famous, but in Spain we got a very special case, which, uh, which was rojadirecta.org. This domain was uh, publishing uh, and streaming through internet of football maths and races and so on. The idea is that uh, a, guy on, uh, a guy with a paid TV connection was recording the, the event and sending the, the, the streaming through internet. And this website was publishing that information. That's illegal in, in the United States of America, but not is illegal in Spain. After a, a trial in Spain, it was declared not guilty. So nothing was supposed to, to happen, but without a trial, the domain was completely disappeared. For us, from a point of view of a Spaniard, that means that internet is not international. It depends on some law across the network. So for us, with our politician, these are politician, the, the guy on the left side is our president, and the guy on the, left, on the right side is supposed to be the next president. It's supposed to be the next president because this guy is doing the things very bad, so it is very happy. The other one is very happy. I'm going to be the next president, but after two elections, he, uh, have, he, he didn't uh, was elect. He wasn't elect at all. And this is the other picture. It's Obama with Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Google, Microsoft. All of these companies are American companies. And they are supposed to accomplish the American law. So if we got in Spain a Facebook account, or we got in Spain a Google account, or we got in Spain, I don't know, uh, an iPad, or an iPad, or an, or an iPhone, what happened with my law? What is the law I need to accomplish to use this service? Well, the problem for, for this uh, conference is about the the blogger, the idea is that if you got a blog and you want to, to write your, your thoughts about whatever, what happens if someone wants to, shut, uh, to take you off on the internet? Well, they got a lot of solutions to do this. First of all, they can take off the route. They can uh, do our own niche of your machine. If you got the, the machine on, on a service provider, it will be very easy for them. The second one is, making it unavailable. As we saw, uh, we saw with WikiLeaks, uh, governments, institutions, I don't know who has the tools to perform distributed denial of services. Of course, also, they can close the domain and block in your service account or ban him from the web engines or throw over you the law. So there are a lot of solutions to, to make you uh, silence. Well, some of the people around the world are working on different kind of projects to fix this problem, to solve this problem. The first, uh, the first project is OpenNIC, which is another DNS system. It's not depending on ICANN. And as you can see, uh, they are serving, I'm going to use the thumb. They are serving different domains, like .bbs, .free, .foo, .geek, .gopher, .india, and so on. The problem is that Right now, the DNS network are not connect. So you need to install a special software in your machine if you want to connect to .com, .org domain, and also to open NIC domains. The second solution that was, uh, was proposed after WikiLeaks problem was the distributed denying DNS system using P2P network, but it was a only one idea. It's very difficult to construct a, a DNS using P2P network, and in the end, this project was completely abandoned. One of the, the best one of the best projects to to solve this problem is Osiris. Osiris is a CMS from from Italy, and the idea of this uh, CMS is that it's completely serverless. 
is a project in which you create your CMS and all the connections are through P2P networks and all the content is, is PGP signed. So in the end, when you are browsing the, browsing the CMS, you are browsing the portal, you, just, uh, you are uh, sending messages and downloading files from the P, uh, P2P network. It works very well and it's impossible to, to take down. The problem with this uh, CMS is that you have to create your website using this technology before you have the problem. But most of the people on the internet don't think uh, that way. At the beginning, everybody creates uh, it's, uh, their blog without any big expectation. I create my blog, I'm starting to, to publish my thoughts, articles, maybe a tool, maybe whatever. In the end, after two years or three years, probably if you, are, uh, if you have been doing uh, good things in your blog, you will have an audience, probably 3,000 people, 5,000 people, and so on. At that moment, if you get, hung, get angry or you get, or you get tired about something, you cannot, you cannot shout. You cannot uh, write whatever you want because there are rules. Rules like this. These are, these are the rules for, uh, from Google for Blogger. As you can see, there are hate speech, crude content, violence, copyright, personal and confidential information, impersonating others, illegal activities. All of them sounds very well, but the problem is that where's the limit? If I publish a picture in which a guy is, uh, is uh, kicking another person and the guy who is kicking to the, to the other person is a powerful person, is a powerful uh, entity, will, be my, will my blog be closed? Who knows? Probably or not. And the most important with these uh, rules is this. This is the blogger content policy. From time to time, we may change of our, our content policy. So please check back there, here. So the idea is that if you have nothing to hide, therefore you have nothing to fear, which is very famous, until we change the policy. So you are publishing things, but tomorrow, that's bad. Uh, well, what you publish is bad. So I'm going to close your blog. And that's all. It's so easy. And with the XML file, there is a big problem because it's a very, very easy to analyze uh, file. It's an XML file. You can automize the analysis of, of blog posts and so on. So it's easy to create rules or alerts to discover who is someone not, uh, not wanted on the internet. So <clears throat> what's the idea? If you got a blog and you are publishing a, an article, an idea, a thought on the internet, people who, who wants to read your thoughts is going to search, search for you using your domain name. It's the most important right now. Most of the people connect to the www.whatever.com and read the information. But uh, every day more, RSS subscription are, in, are increasing on the internet. Probably most of you only read information on the internet using RSS. Hands up, only RSS, not browsing the website, just RSS. Well, the idea is that the RSS is the uh, point of failure. Your audience is connected not to you, not to your blogger, is connected to your RSS feed. If your RSS feed is closed, your audience is gone. So, in my, in my case, I'm, I'm blogging in my personal blog, and in Un Informatico en el lado del mal, it, doesn't, it cannot be translated to English. And as you can see, my feed is also in feed burner. So I got a big problem because if Google closed my account, feed burner is also a Google company. So I'm going to, to lose my blog and also my reader. The idea is that we need to create some special techniques or technologies to avoid this situation, to allow the blogger to always uh, publish their content from different sources. And that's the idea of our, project, of our project. If not, just closing your RSS feed and everything was fine. Well, what was the idea of this project? The idea is to create a, a reader, just a reader, but with a special feature. The idea of this uh, RSS reader is that 
it can retrieve information from different HTTP sources and also from sources published on P2P networks. So the idea is that for the reader, it's only a sub subscription, but behind the subscription, we'll have a lot of different uh, HTTP sources and also different P2P networks. What's the idea? Let's suppose that we are reading our blogs, like every day. We got four subscriptions, but in our environment with our technology, the idea is that Every subscription has behind different sources. As you can see, the subscription one has two HTTP sources and also a P2P uh, source. The subscription three, one HTTP, one P2P. The, 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 sorry, the, the subscription three, the subscription two, the same, and the sus subscription four, only one P2P source. You can do whatever you want. You are reading uh, posts. That's the idea. So. In the end, we are going to create a, a reader like this. It's a proof of concept. And as you can see, we got different sources for each, each, uh, each block. In this example, three from HTTP and one from P2P network. The idea is that it's so easy to add new, uh, new HTTP sources. RSS, the feed, is an XML file. Just adding a line saying, okay, I'm the blogger, I want you to add this new HTTP source. Just a line. If the reader read that command and asks to the user, okay, the, the publicator subjects you to add a new HTTP source for this subscription, it's okay for you. Just clicking okay, you are going to add new sources to, <coughs> sorry, to the subscription. That's very easy to migrate from one, one uh, architecture with only one point of failure to an architecture with no one, uh, no one uh, point of failure. And also, the idea is that if you want to publish your, your blog and your, your account is closed, you don't need even to have a blog. You can create the feed from your local machine and distribute it using the P2P network. The idea is that if I got uh, an XML editor and I create the, my blog post using the XML editor, and I, or I have an intranet or whatever, I can take the XML file, use my personal, my public, my private PGP key, signed this XML file. This is important because in the P2P network, there are a lot of file pollution attacks and we need to create special defense, then using Dust, automatically, you can publish on the P2P network in this example, in this implementation using Nutella. <clears throat> so the idea is that you can republish all the feeds from a file, from a, from a website, from an intranet, even it's possible to send a TXT file on an, on an email system and just sending an email with an automatic process, publish the, the fit on the P2P network. So the only, the only thing, the only change that we need to do internally, this, these changes uh, are done by, by us, is that we create a fit like this. This is the, the fit, this is the, the name. As you can see, we got the channel, then the date. It's important to discover the, the most updated uh, fit. Then we got the has, the SA1 has of the public PGP key. This is the, the token that we are going to use to search for the, the files on the P2P network. And then the only change that we do is to the images. We, we in most, uh, that in most of the cases are related to a, a web server. We are going to convert the image from a web server to a P2P, P2P link, and that link is just in the AL modifier, we are going to add Nutella and the hash of the file in the Nutella network. So in the end, all the images, as you can see, are going to be published also on the P2P network and digital, digital sign. So this is uh, when you publish your, your feed, uh, Dust is going to dusterize in your, uh, the complete, complete uh, file. Uh, uh, fit and all the files needed to read your 
your, your feed are going to, to be published on the P2P network. So the idea is that <coughs> the readers are going to, to subscribe to the, a public uh, PGP key, but that public PGP key, PGP key is not necessary to be the author's PGP key. It can be uh, the PGP key of another user who is sharing information uh, to me. I like the information that he is sharing, and I want to subscribe to that guy. So I'm going to add a source to the PGP key network. So let's, let's see this in action with a demo. I got two machines, two virtual machines. This and this, of course, all demos are going to fail, but let's try it. Well, the Windows XP machine has a, has a subscription to Uninformatico en el lado del mal, which is my personal blog. And as you can see, the last blog post is Hacking Remote Apps Part 2. OK? Then we go to the other machine with us, and we are going to create a subscription for my personal blog. In this example, I got three different feeds. Each of them, it, will, it, it, it is going to, to be supposed as a different HTTP source. As you can see, the first one is at 28th of July. The second one is uh, at 29th of July. And the third one is at uh, th uh, 3rd of August. OK? Now I'm going to take the oldest, which is this, and I'm going to copy the feed. And then I'm going to set up a channel name. Subscribe. And then I'm going to use the other two. As you can see, it's El Lado del Mal, and the third one is El Lado del Mal 3. So I just, I just need to add new HTTP source, El Lado del Mal, and El Lado del Mal 3. OK. Right now, in this, in this subscription, in this script error, I got three different HTTP sources. Okay. Well, now I'm going to publish this uh, this blog with my PGP keys. So I only need to publish the blog, select my private key. Come on. Oh. Oh, no. What happened? I just select the file. OK. The key and the public key for the name. We need the public key just for the name of the feed. OK, that's all. All the files are going to be dusterized and published in the select folder. And now, in the other, on the other machine, I'm going to add a new public key, yes, this, which is the public key of the, of the publicator. OK, if everything goes fine, I'm going to update this blog. And this blog will be updated for different sources. For the user, it will be transparent, completely transparent, no matter from which source this uh, blog had been uh, updated. But in the end, I got the last, the last feed. And as you can see, even the images, in this example, uh, as you can see, the image is related to the Nutella network. But in the end, the image will be downloaded. In this machine, we don't have internet connection. So the image had, uh, had been passed from the, uh, from the P2P network. So that's the idea. The idea is just to create a reader. As you can see, there is no information about the P2P network because we don't want 
uh, to construct a P2P client, we want to construct something that people use. So we need to, to create something cool for social media victims, no? people who use the new technology, the new tool, the, the new version. So we are searching for designers to do something cool no? for, for that kind of people with a very nice logo, with very nice interface, and, and so on. Right now, it's, a, it's an open source project. It's under an Apache license. You can download the code from dashproject.codeplex.com, of course, from Nutella Network. And uh, if you want to, it's, it's written in, in Java. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you want to, uh, to use it or you have any question, for us, it will be a pleasure. Today, I'm going to deliver a talk with my company, my, with a friend in the track two at six, uh, 16 o'clock. It was supposed to, to be called Terminal Application because we are going to do some crappy demos with Terminal Service and Citrix, but in the end we call it Bosses Love Excel Hackers 2. And tomorrow, for FOCA lovers, I'm going to deliver a workshop about FOCA 3, which is the new version of FOCA. I don't know if any of you know FOCA. Ah, thank you. Okay. Well, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.